on everybody? Uh, Colin here with the Reptile Barn. Just here in the snake room doing a little work. I've been rearranging our insects a little bit. Uh, and I don't know if we've ever really showed you a lot uh, of what we do with our insects. So I've showed you the dubias before. They're in there doing great. Um, don't really need to pull them back out. However, we've been trying to do crickets recently. Because a uh, little blue monitor lizard here. Zoom in on her. Back and away. She's in that log. Right there. There's our beautiful little little girl there. So she um, has only recently started accepting any dubias. We were very excited about that. <laughs> However, when she wasn't accepting any dubias or any other insect except crickets, we kept buying crickets. We'd buy them at the pet store where they're stupidly expensive. We'd buy them in shipments from some of the good online providers. Um, rainbow mealworms we were using and they're great. But we kept having to buy our own all these crickets just for one lizard. So we tried to breed them and uh, the first time around was no good at all. The second time um, the adult females started laying a bunch of eggs and I mean a bunch of eggs but we couldn't keep the adults alive very long. Now we were getting old crickets as big as we could get them and crickets don't live very long so we we were having trouble keeping the adults alive. Our last batch of crickets had just run out um, when Little Blue started taking a couple of dubias. Not much. She doesn't seem totally sold on them, but she started she started taking dubias. So we kept all the cricket eggs and didn't order more crickets uh, and started just feeding her dubias as much as we could. And the dubias started, she started doing better and better with the dubias and we were getting excited. And then all of a sudden the cricket eggs started hatching. <laughs> And since we hadn't even been able to keep the adults alive very well, we didn't really expect the eggs to do much, but we now have like 8,000 tiny, tiny crickets. Look at this. Move this off. Isn't that wild? They're all baby crickets. There's a lot of them. Um, we are using fresh greens grown ourselves. Um, so chard, several types of lettuce, carrot greens, the actual carrots, um, some very high quality dog food to get them as much protein as we can. Um, some actual cricket feed, some commercial cricket feed. And then we mix a little bit of the reptile calcium and D3 powder in with the uh, dry feed, which is the dog food and the um, cricket food. And then we also scattered some dog food throughout there. Crickets are omnivores. Uh, they have a dietary need, fairly similar to us actually. Uh, and these little ones need a lot of protein, so we, we scattered the dog food all over the place. Uh, this is actually puppy dog food. So it's even higher protein than a regular adult dog food. And then we just put in a whole bunch of egg cartons for them to crawl around on. We put in some water crystals on there uh, so that they can drink without drowning because these crickets will drown by the thousands if you have regular standing water in there, as we've learned. And they seem to be growing. They, might, they seem a little bit bigger than when they first popped out of the egg. I left the, you can see down there the edge of the, egg container uh, because there's still baby crickets coming out of those eggs. Let's see if you can see any. So the little white things that look like tiny tiny grains of sand those are the eggs. You can see a few of them. Let's see if the camera will focus. If I can hold my hand still. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, those are eggs. Oh, and that actually, that one in the middle of the screen, that's a cricket that just came out. Oh, nope, it doesn't want to focus in. Anyway, there's a lot of crickets, guys, a lot of crickets. 
They're white when they first come out of the egg. They quickly turn dark. And they start eating. Which is great. So who knows? Maybe these will all die just like the adults died. But we seem to have the temperature and the humidity and the food and the water and everything right. So hopefully, in a couple of weeks, we'll have thousands of crickets. And we'll have to get more bins because they certainly aren't going to all fit in here. Um, yeah, pretty excited though. Um, this would be nice if we could start to get little bluesome variety. Um, the dubias and the crickets are both pretty good as a staple diet for um, insectivore reptiles. Uh, and it would be really nice if we could convince her or him to take other stuff too as a supplement. So um, she does take chopped pinky. She loves chopped pinky. Uh, we could try when we start our quail, which we want to start outside, uh, we could try some chopped quail, just little hatchlings. Um, we haven't done any egg or anything like that, although I'm pretty sure in the wild these do eat eggs. Um, as far as insects, though, I'd like to get more variety. That's what I'm most interested in, because these are, these are primarily insectivores, the whole tree monitor group. Lots of monitors, really, especially as young babies. So back at the beginning, we tried waxworms, superworms, mealworms, hornworms. Uh, actually, not hornworms yet. Maybe we should try those ones. But he wouldn't take any of those, or she. Wouldn't take any of those. Uh, so now that she's taking some dubias... Uh, and, do, and starting to improve on this, she's taking more and more each day. Um, I might try a couple of those again. But none of them will be as good as the dubias or even the crickets as far as a staple diet. Those are the most well-rounded uh, nutritionally for an insectivore. But it's good to get some variety, some different trace elements and nutrients and minerals and stuff that are in different types of insects. Um, I know that soldier fly larvae are supposed to be super high in calcium, I think, and... Uh, just all sorts of stuff. So we'll try we'll try some other things, see if we can get her a, a real nice, well-rounded diet. The breeder told me that even his breeding pairs that are, you know, high production, having three or four clutches a year, um, he doesn't have to use a multivitamin if they're eating a really well-rounded diet and if every insect that they eat is very well gut-loaded. So if the insects are super healthy and if they're eating... Um, a good variety of, of healthy proteins, uh, greens, fresh greens, a lot of vegetable matter, a little bit of fruit, um, then the insects themselves are healthy enough, as long as you have a well-rounded diet for your monitor, uh, that he doesn't even need a multivitamin. Still gives the calcium and D3 supplement, um, which is pretty standard, but not a, the typical multivitamin. Um, so right now, you know, just eating crickets and now in the last week or so, some dubias, that's not enough. We need to add some more insects into the diet, as many as we can. I think that she's taken some beetles. Some of the uh, uh, mealworms and superworms have sat in her cage so long that without being eaten that they have uh, morphed into the adult uh, beetles. And I think that she's eaten some of those, which is good. But uh, yeah, so we're just getting our feet wet here with insects. We're not, I mean, we're not insect people, we're reptile people. I like bugs just fine, but uh, the big dubias, you know, the big long ones, I still can't freehand them. <laughs> the little ones I can just pick up, but the, the big ones I gotta use like tongs or a glove or something because they just freak me out. Not that the monitor's big enough to eat a, you know, a big adult dubia right now, but she will be. Um, and then it will be really nice for us that she's on dubias because a big dubia is, I don't know, eight times bigger than a than an adult cricket. So I, I was just, you know, getting these visions of having to feed the monitor 200 crickets every meal <laughs> just to get enough nutrition. But uh, with the dubias, it'll be a lot easier because they're a lot bigger. But yeah, um, other than that, she's doing really well. She no longer flees when I approach the cage, which is really nice. Um, I've been working on some techniques to try and get her more socialized. I still haven't, you know, just straight picked her up, but I am now able to put my hand right next to her, even with my fingers wiggling, and she doesn't run away. So she's getting, she's getting bolder. It's a slow process, and I am an impatient person, but the reward is going to be so fantastic when I have a well-socialized tree monitor that will let me pick her up um, 
and uh, interact a little bit. You know, you don't, you never need with these ones that need such high temperatures and high humidity. You don't want to, you know, be pulling them out and holding them all the time uh, for long periods of time. But uh, they certainly are intelligent enough to learn that you're safe and that you're not going to hurt them and that they can come out and explore a little bit. Uh, and I think that they will be happier that way. I will be happier that way. So I've been I've been trying to be conscientious about every day spending a few minutes with my hand in there so she's used to the look of it, smell of it, how it moves. And uh, the idea is that eventually she will come to me. That's the thought. You know, there's kind of two ways that people do this. Some people um, force handle them. They just get them out and they let them be terrified. <laughs> And the monitor kind of learns that you're not going to hurt it over some time. We're not doing that. We're we're doing the the slow approach. Um, that's what was recommended to us, and that's what we have been doing. And it seems to be making progress. Um, I, again, am not a patient person, <laughs> but this has been um, a pretty awesome experience to take an animal that I mean, the beginning was just terrified. I felt so bad for the poor thing. Just hid always. Heard a sound, gone. Saw anything move, gone. Just in the hides all day long. Um, but now, uh, that's not the case. And it's it's uh, going to be you know several more months, I think, before uh, I'm able to just easily hold her uh, without her being afraid at all. But that's what we're aiming for. And uh, we're happy with her diet. She's now tong feeding almost exclusively, which is really nice. Uh, she'll take, she'll come up right to the tongs and take them off the tongs. Um, she has successfully transferred over to dubias, which we like better than the crickets. I don't like the crickets. They're loud. They stink. They die. They bite. They crawl on everything. They have. They're much better climbers. Um, the dubias are just. Superior, and I've heard that the dubias are also healthier for them. Not that crickets are bad. If any of you out there are feeding your animal crickets, they're they're very healthy as well. But I've heard that the dubias are even more nutritionally complete than the crickets. So I'm very happy that she's taken to them. Um, showed you a little bit of the setup there. It's real simple. It's just a you know sterilite tub or plastic tub of some kind with you know some harborage of egg crates and a little bit of food and water, and that's it. And they seem to be fine. Our snake room here is 81, maybe 82 degrees. So that's a good temperature for the crickets. Uh, supposedly the babies will grow faster if it's a little hotter, but that's fine. We actually have heat pads under and around the dubias uh, and around the back so that they're a little warmer. They're like 85 to 87 degrees in there, and they breed prolifically and eat like crazy. Um, so I'm glad that we're actually getting to use some of them now. <laughs> uh, they live a lot longer than the than the crickets, a couple of years, generally. So we could have just been overrun with dubias. Uh, we had we had a lot. We actually just gave some away because we just had too many. Uh, other than that, I was just I just wanted to give you guys an update on the insects. I know that most of you guys who watch are reptile people, not bug people, but lots of you keep reptiles who eat bugs. So. Um, I figured I'd share some of the things that have worked for us with the crickets and more of the things that haven't worked since we were unable to really keep our adult colony of crickets going very well. I mean, the, the monitor was eating a lot of them, a lot of them. I was putting in 35, 45 at a time, and he'd just poof, go crazy chasing around the cage till they were all gone. But uh, lots of them just died. So before I sign off here, if any of you see anything in my setup or have suggestions for changes I could make. Uh, I don't want all these baby crickets that seem to be really healthy right now. I'm not seeing any dead ones. Uh, I don't want them all to die. <laughs> I'd like to use them and, and feed them off and have them be healthy. I'm trying to give them a well-rounded diet. I think there's enough protein in there. I know that some people don't give them enough protein and, and they need that to grow. I think, I think I've seen them eating the dog food and they seem to like it. And I don't know. Any suggestions are very welcome. Uh, we do not have the the pride here that would get angry at some corrective criticism, so please let me know. I'm certain that some of you out there keep crickets who watch this vlog. Uh, so please let me know what I can do better because I would like to offer a wider range to the monitor of insects. Mm -hmm.